So we might have a small problem in that I don't think there's anything holding that supporting wall up. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy Mack and we are in the process of doing quite a major 1920s renovation project. We've done quite a few of these over the years. This is probably one of our biggest ones that we've ever tackled. And I wanted to take you with us on our journey so you can see what's involved in tackling a project like this because it's not always straightforward. And uh, today uh, is a very, very typical example of that. Let me just explain what's going on with this wall. So if you remember on one of the last videos, I mentioned that I'm probably gonna have to take this kitchen floor up because there's damp in it and it's been rotting the wall plate and the joists at the bottom there. So I, I am, we're kind of decided on the fact that yes, I think the, the correct thing to do is to rip this up and uh, I'll probably put a suspended floor in to be honest because it'll make life easier for running uh, like services and things under the floor and we can insulate it and it's just then it matches all the other floors in the house. Alongside that the plaster is going to be coming in soon because as you can see we've got quite a lot of plastering to do in this house and I was just about to book them in when I noticed a new crack and you know old houses like this you get cracks in the walls the cracks are generally nothing to worry about because they've been there for years and years and nothing's happened but when a new crack materializes in the middle of a renovation because you've disturbed something, that is something that you need to pay a little bit more attention to. And the crack, you can probably just kind of see, was at the bottom there. And I'll explain why that's potentially quite a major issue because you see this is a supporting wall. It's a brick wall and you can tell in this property which walls are supporting because almost all of the supporting walls are made of brick whereas the non-supporting walls are made of cinder block. Anyway, so this wall comes up here. We have got, if I head through into the kitchen side, but we've got a concrete lintel coming across here. You can just see the edge of it there. So they wouldn't have gone to the trouble of putting a concrete lintel in if this wasn't quite an important wall. So that obviously spans across to that side over there. I don't know whether it's one continuous uh, lintel. Oh, you, can, you can just see the underside of it there. In fact, that would be quite an interesting thing to know. Uh, let's find out very, very quickly. Looks like two separate lintels to me. Yeah, so it is separate concrete lintels, which I'm quite surprised about. I personally would have run one big lintel all the way across, but hey, I wasn't here a hundred years ago because we've got a tiny overlap. God, we've barely got a, what, a 50 mil overlap onto this wall here. So that is the edge of the living room wall. So obviously that is quite a critical wall if you were to take that out. The, well, quite a large proportion of the house would fall down. But anyway, my point is this section of wall here, let me just show you upstairs why this is an important wall. So coming up the stairs, here's the continuation of that wall. And as you can see, it's a very big, quite a tall wall. So there's gonna be a lot of weight in here. You can see from the direction of the floorboards, that means the joists are running left to right. So that means that the joists are also supported by this wall. Here's the other side of the wall in one of the bedrooms. And that goes all the way up to ceiling level and up there. So that's the top of that supporting wall. And at the moment, there's um, various parts of the roof structure that rest on that. And eventually, I think we might have mentioned this in a previous video that there'll need to be a pad stone put in that top corner. That's gonna take a steel that's gonna support part of the new roof structure for the extension. So the point is, is that any load that goes onto that new pad stone that sits on that wall, is going to transfer down all the way down this wall together with the weight of all these floors oh and the staircase is probably attached to that wall as well all the way down to the bottom here where it finally meets the ground but the problem is is that in this particular design of wall and this is very common in older houses that they do stuff like this and it, it's a bit stupid in, in all honesty but uh, such is life but 
the wall plate that supports these joists. So the wall plate is basically a piece of wood that runs on top of this wall at the bottom here. There's a wall plate sits on it, the joists sit on the wall plate, and then they've built the rest of the wall on top of the wall plate. And the wall plate's rotted away to nothing because of the problems with this kitchen floor, which we're gonna tackle on a separate video. But because the wall plate doesn't exist, I mean, you can see over in this corner over here, that, that joist is literally sitting on, on just fresh air. That joist there is uh, not sitting on anything. You can see, can you see the brick height there? That's how much it's dropped. So the floor's dropped by about two inches because the end of that joist's rotten and the wall plate has literally disintegrated. And <laughs> that means that this wall, this supporting wall, is basically sitting on fresh air. There's, look, we've got gaps and I can get my hand through here. I can get my hand under there. These bricks have, well, you can see they're not held in with anything. I've just temporarily slung some dry bricks down here so that if anything does give way, it can't move very far. I mean, it's amazing how this wall is, is still staying up. I'm surprised there's not bigger signs of movement. There was only a tiny little crack in the plaster work and that's what kind of gave things away. And then when the plaster work came away, you could see bricks uh, like this that just weren't attached to anything. So this whole bottom section of the wall, it's just not sitting on anything. So yeah, I think I best tackle that before I start taking to the kitchen floor with a jackhammer because the vibration of taking this kitchen floor up could well cause this wall, if nothing else, it would cause it to drop and that would cause all sorts of problems for the house. This needs fixed urgently.
Right, that's enough for day one. I've actually got some support under this wall now and I might actually be able to get to sleep tonight. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing about the joists yet. As you can see, I mean, this is unbelievable that it's got to this kind of state and I think it's just because these bricks have clearly been moved over the years and I suspect, I don't know, when new electric supplies were put in and stuff like that, they've just kind of chipped away and I mean, you can see a crack going down the wall there. Luckily, it's just, it hasn't moved. It's testament to how well these houses are, are built, ignoring the fact that there's a wall plate hidden in the middle of the wall. But luckily the wall didn't really move. So any bricklayers watching, I, I'm sorry, please don't judge, but it's functional. I'm gonna leave that to go off overnight, or maybe even I might even give it a couple of days, and then I'll tackle this remaining section here, and then I'll sort some support for the joists as well. But uh, yeah, crazy. This whole section of structural wall just, it was suspended in midair. It just went, look, there wasn't a single, there wasn't a single fixed brick in the whole lot. Every brick was like that, I mean, just, <laughs> doing absolutely nothing. You can see there's the wall plate there. That's what's left of the wall plate. I'll leave that there for what it's worth, just for now. I did lay a brick here, by the way, as you probably saw, but then I've removed it because I think it'll get in the road of uh, doing the final floor when we eventually come to do that. I've still got this joist here to sort out because the end of this is quite rotten, but you can hear it's solid solid up to about there and then it goes kind of downhill so I think I'll chop this one off as well um, but that one's nowhere near as bad as all the other ones and then all, everything else is absolutely fine you can see the wall plate there and it's solid and I've checked all around the house and it's all absolutely fine it's just and you can see we've got nice little ventilation holes underneath the floor all the way along and that's testament to Good ventilation just fixes everything. It's this one floor here that for whatever reason they've done concrete and I suspect the quarry tiles have been done at a later date and it's just trapped all the moisture under the floor. The moisture's got nowhere to go other than up the walls is my diagnosis with my 
very limited knowledge of uh, damp proofing. It's certainly nothing to do with damp proof courses. And yeah, just to show you this, this was one of the wall plates. One of the wall plates that hadn't actually completely disintegrated. But uh, yeah, not a lot. I mean, it's just the whole wall plate had literally just turned to dust. There's an end of a joist as well and another end of a joist. So desperately needed sorted out. Certainly now is the time to do it and uh, then I'll actually be able to get to sleep at night knowing that a major structural wall in the house isn't about to fall down. As I say, I'll leave that right hand section to go off for a day or so and then I'll tackle that left hand bit and we'll come back.
I rapidly came to the conclusion that all you could see was my backside when I was working here. So I just had to kind of get the job done and this wall is nice and solid now. I've deliberately left a couple of gaps for pipes and cables and things to run through. I need to sort out some ventilation holes as well. That's going to be probably another video. This is going to end up merging with a video all about damp issues in this property. So I don't want to go too much further than that. Otherwise, the two videos are going to end up kind of blending into one another. I have cut off all the bad bits of these joists and at the minute they're just sitting on some temporary sleeper walls. Uh, I jacked up this end one and it's perfectly level now. But, and the jack is still under the floor as well. But I need to come up with a more permanent solution because obviously these uh, just dry blocks can't just stay there. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing yet. I'm vaguely thinking joist hangers on a ledger across the back here. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, jury's out because I've still got a little bit of rotten joist to cut away on that one but I'll probably sister up some new joists onto these to get nice good support but that's going to form another new video all about when I do the floor in that room. So lots going on here. The main thing is this supporting wall ain't going to fall down now which is good news. Again, don't judge my brickwork. That brick there, I couldn't get any further in because there was a piece of concrete on the other side getting in the road. Again, we'll come to that in a future video because that piece of concrete is no longer there. I've tidied up all under the floor so it's nice and, well, we're just down to the oversight really. 1920s house and we've got a concrete oversight. I mean, it's not the best of concrete oversights, but it's a concrete oversight nonetheless. So it's pretty tidy under there now, as tidy as it's going to get. I've also cleared out all of the ventilation holes. I don't know if you can see, but there's a uh, nice uh, well, honeycomb brickwork under there. And that's just clearing out ventilation passages through to the living room floor. I need to lift a few more floorboards so that I can get under here to do underfloor insulation and a whole load of other things. All of that will be on a future video. So watch this space. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll talk about what's going on in what was the kitchen in a future video as well. But that's it for now, disaster averted, I can sleep at night, and as I say, don't forget, there's a video coming up all about the floor in the kitchen. Very exciting things going on in there, so hit the subscribe button and that'll probably be the next video, hopefully. Anyway, I'll leave it at that for now. I need to get going because it's getting late and it started snowing in May. Take care folks, I shall see you next time. Tatty bye.